we're going to be transferring everything from here over to here. This is a 7820. All of that is going into a 7010. As you can see, the heat sink and cooling fans are different between these two computers, but they both have the same i5 chip in them. So we're going to start by removing what used to be the disk drive that I've converted into a solid state drive. I'm gonna remove that on both. There we go. And switch. Now we need to get to the mass storage. So to do that, you just flip this this way, rotate up. You've got two things to unplug. And there we go. This slides out just like that. Now, we need to just put it right back in to the other one, the same way. But first, we need to swap out the RAM. Let's flip these, move the RAM. This one only had one four gigabyte stick in it. We'll set that aside and we're going to take out all of the RAM from this one and transfer it over. There's two. Do, 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 do. So the cool thing about RAM is it should just push directly down and click into place if you're putting it in there properly, which I may not be. Let's see. Yep, I was putting it in there backwards. Don't put it in there backwards like I did, especially not when you try to force it in. Things just, things need to be compatible. You shouldn't be forcing things. There we go. One in place. If you heard that in the background, that was my dog. He feels a little jealous. He doesn't get to be on camera. There we go. Next two, get that one out. That's a four. Interesting. So four times four is gonna be 16 gigabytes of RAM. I think it's interesting that the RAM goes in the opposite direction in the 7010 than it does in the 7020. There we go. All right, we've got the RAM in place. This is a very interesting heatsink. All right, got the RAM in place. Now, for the mass storage drive, we've got a caddy already in here, so we'll pull that out. Set that aside. There we go. Mass storage. Move these things out of the way and swing it down. All right, now I just need to plug it in. We've got the information and the power. There we go. Okay, that is done. And now for the drive to run the operating system. Let's plug it in. Oops, yeah, one and two. Slide that into place. Feels kind of gummy instead of clicky. Hopefully that's in there. All right, now we're gonna take this old junk card out of here. It is holding on for dear life. All right, got it. So now for the 1050 Ti, this is what we're going to be testing. How much better is this going to run in a PCI Express 16 slot? It was in a PCI Express 4 slot. So we'll see how much better 16 is than 4. So after I get this thing plugged in, we'll get it fired up and run that user benchmark, uh, user benchmark test. Oh, let me take this out. And we'll see how much better it is. Matchy, matchy, line it up. Ta-da! All right, and these cords are freaking me out a little bit. Scooch those out of the way. There we go, a little less freaked out. And we're done. Now time to put the top back on, fire this baby up, and let's see how much better it performs. 
testing the graphics card, it got a score of 28.1, a below average 3D score. It says this GPU can handle older games, but will struggle to render recent games and resolutions greater than 1080p. All right, after switching to the PCI Express 16 slot, we went from a score of 28.1 to 28.8 on graphics. So a little bit of an improvement, but not very significant. So the moral of the story here is a more powerful graphics card is a more powerful graphics card. Really, no matter whether it's plugged into a PCI Express 4 or a PCI Express 16.